Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. In this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we are learning how to use Transex. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to watch all these videos in order, so by the time you get out to this point, you have all the knowledge, all the skills from all the previous videos. But at the very, very least, I'm a, you have to have seen the previous videos that I did on Transex. So if you're coming into the Absolute Beginner Guide and you're somehow finding this video first and you're wanting to learn how to use Transex, stop this video, go back to the first video where we're first learning how to use Transex, and then go forward from there. And if possible, go all the way back to video number one in the Absolute Beginner Guide and work your way forward. You definitely don't want to start in the middle. You'll, you'll be lost. Go ahead and switch camera views here. And in the last video, we were talking about how to do an off-plane transfer to the moon. And I'm just going to go ahead and reset Transex here, and we're just going to run through the whole thing really quickly. I'm going to run through the setup again. That way, uh, you know, that way we don't have any we don't have any problems of being like lost. <laughs> so let me go back to stage one here. We're going to view over to the setup, and we're going to go none and forward, and that effectively resets Transex for us. Actually, I also have to turn maneuver mode off. Now Transex is reset. So again, uh, to get out to the moon, we're going to go, you know, planets, moons, and we're going to go moon. Then we're going to go forward on this side. We're going to view the maneuver. Uh, rather, we're going to view the encounter. Now on this side, we're going to view the maneuver, turn maneuver mode on. And we're going to go to the prograde variable because we need to have enough prograde velocity to get us out to the moon. We know that that number is about 3150, so we can just type it. It's a little faster. Then from there, we can refine it with the, uh, you know, the different levels of adjustment. So we're going to take out a little bit of prograde. And now we need to work on our timing. And this is kind of where we were at at the end of the last video, where we were trying to figure out, you know, the best time to leave Earth. So let's come back around to the maneuver date. And let's, uh, any time you deal with the date, one of the first things you often want to do is just reset it for starters, just to get everything set current. Now we're going to move the date forward. And remember that date isn't necessarily days, weeks, months. It's also time. So here when we're talking about maneuver date, we're really talking about time. We're just going to move the time forward by an hour or whatever we have to move it forward by. So we're going to uh, press plus plus and we're going to swing this around so that it gets over here toward the line of nodes. And again, we're watching the encounter view over here to determine when we have the correct time by watching the minimum altitude. And when that gets as low as it will get, which is about right there. Now we can uh, we can tell that we're still a little bit on the high side, so let's go to the prograde variable. And on the prograde variable, we want to do uh, an adjustment probably down to a super setting, and we just want to either add or subtract a little bit of prograde in order to bring the minimum altitude down. So let's just try adding in prograde. That's helping. It's bringing the minimum altitude down. And uh, once it starts kind of getting to that point where it's not getting any lower and it starts going back up, now we want to play with our time a little bit more, see you know, if we need to leave Earth a little bit sooner or a little bit later. So down here at the hyper setting, let's just add in some time. That's not helping. Let's take away some time. And you can see now, by taking away some time, we now have the minimum altitude down to a, a reasonable figure. We could, we could go with this. Now, again, uh, the, this timing isn't perfect because we're seeing that the moon, we're seeing that we're going to arrive here instead of right here. So we're arriving a little bit late. So let me think about that for just a second. So we, we the, or either we're arriving late or the moon is late, I'm not sure which. What we can do to figure out on the ti on the timing though, I want to know if it'll help me to leave, instead of leaving Earth here in just, you know, 3,000 seconds, what I want to know is what if I wait one orbit or two orbit or maybe five orbits? So let's go to the uh, maneuver time and let's go forward. Let's just, let's try five orbits and see what that does and see if we're closer to the line of nodes or farther away. So let's go to the super setting. So we're going to go around several times. So that's one, two, three, four, 
and let's see this one. So that's the fifth orbit around, and let's see where we are at with respect to the line of nodes now when we have our lowest point. Okay, so now let's check our, our uh, prograde. See if taking out prograde helps. Does not. Adding in prograde helps. And to me, this looks like it's worse. So let's do it the other way. Let's go backwards uh, three or four orbits. So we're going to change over to the date. And we're going to actually reset the date rather than, to, uh, rather than go backwards. We're going to start by resetting the date, which makes the date right now, this very second. And let's go backwards one, two, three three orbits and here we are so we we are arriving at the moon pretty much perfectly at the line of nodes at that point so in this particular flight what that tells me is that we we took off from earth too late um, and so and that and again that's the problem with trying to rely on a 45 degree figure because the moon doesn't move at a constant velocity so we just needed to, so to have a perfect flight, we would have wanted to have left, uh, what would that be, two or three hours earlier. And you can see by doing that, we would arrive at the moon um, at, 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 the, uh, at the node. Let me see if I can take away a little bit of this uh, prograde, because you can see it kind of comes out there a little bit. And then just adjust the time ever so slightly. Yeah, even this timing isn't quite right, but we're just we're just going to go with the time that we chose. So let's go back to uh, reset the time so that it's right now. And let's go forward here, and we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and commit to the uh, to the time that we had, so we don't have to use the scenario editor to change our time around. And the only consequence of this again is that our capture. Delta V would probably be a little bit higher than it, than it would be if we had our timing exactly perfect. But this is actually um, not too bad either because it gives us a chance to show that if your timing isn't quite right, it's okay. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you don't have to abort the flight. Now, something else I want to point out again: anytime you do a transex maneuver, if it takes you more than just a few seconds to set up the maneuver, then you want to do an update every 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Just FYI on that. Get in the habit of doing that. Now I'm going to adjust the prograde again to bring that minimum altitude down. And then we're going to adjust the uh, date to bring the minimum altitude down. And we, could pro we can fly this, but let's uh, just get it a little bit better. And I like to have a figure of around uh, 50 kilometers or so to decide, uh, to decide how, you know, how the numbers look. So you can see here our capture delta is about 176. And it would be a little bit lower if we were perfectly in plane. It would probably be closer to like 160 or 165 if we were perfectly, if we were arriving perfectly at the line of nodes. But since our timing isn't quite right, then it's a little bit off. Okay, so that's that's everything that I can really cover about the off-plane portion of the transfer. Now let's make things even more complicated. <laughs> One thing we can start taking into account while we're still here at Earth is when we arrive at the moon, where are we going to land? And we're going to, in this case, you know, we're going to land at Brighton Beach. We can fly this plan as is and then go halfway out and do a mid-course correction of some kind. But we can also start thinking about how to set up our arrival at the moon before we ever leave the Earth. And the way we do that, we need to bring up Map MFD. And we need to reference the moon, and we need to select our target, which is going to be Brighton Beach. And you'll notice when I selected Brighton Beach as my target, I got new information over here on this side. This information, this information tells me uh, tells me how well I'm doing or how far off plane I'm going to be from Brighton Beach. So let's bring Transx back up on this side. And we can see here that we're actually, without really doing any correction at all, we can fly this plan. Our off-plane distance is only 35 uh, kilometers, and that's that's nothing. It's not even worth trying to correct that, because because Transx isn't accurate enough anyway. 
So if we tried to bring this down to zero, it wouldn't matter because it's not going to hold. But let's say that your off-plane distance is much worse. Let's say it's, uh, you know, something like, I don't know, that number or whatever. What you need to do is just adjust your prograde and your time until you bring your off-plane distance down to a reasonable number. And anything around 100 kilometers or less is reasonable. It, it's a waste of time to try to get any more accurate than that because by the time you get out of Earth's uh, strong s uh, sphere of influence, you're going to see that number jump to like 1,000 kilometers one direction or the other. So don't waste your time trying to refine it beyond you know, 100 kilometers, but 100 kilometers is a pretty good number to go with. So, um, in the way you can, the way you adjust it, again, is just by adding in a little bit of additional prograde if you need to, or changing the time around. But notice when you do it, it'll also have an impact on your minimum altitude. In some cases, what you'll actually have to do is you'll have to go to another variable, and it will either be the outward variable or the plane change, which we haven't we haven't used those variables yet, and I've actually been avoiding them on purpose. But you might find that if you can't get the minimum altitude down to a low number and have the off-plane distance at a low number at the same time, you might find that adding or subtracting some outward will help. And it should just be a little bit. So don't have it on a course setting. Go down to maybe ultra or super rather and just add in a little bit of uh, plain, um, outward. And I can see here, as I add in some outward, it's raising my minimum altitude, which I don't want, and it's making my off-plane distance farther out, which I don't want. But if I take away some outward, let me actually start by resetting it back to zero. But if I take away some outward, notice that my off-plane distance is coming down, and so is my minimum, minimum altitude. That won't always be the case. Sometimes when you take away uh, off outward, you'll have one variable going up and one going down. And it can get into this really annoying situation where you can't seem to resolve it. But if you tinker with the outward, the prograde, and the time enough, you will get to a point where you have a sufficient, a, a, a sufficient solution. Don't try to get everything perfect. It is, it is, I can't emphasize this enough. Transx just isn't accurate enough for perfection. So we're just trying to get really close to what we, what we want. And then from there, we're going to have to do a mid-course correction of some, time, of some kind. And this is more than good enough. If the minimum altitude were 300 and the off-plane distance was 75, I would be happy with that. If the minimum altitude was negative 400, and the off-plane distance was positive 100. I'm fine with that. There's there's you know a pretty good margin there where you can where you can just accept your plan. Once you have your plan set up how you want, press uh, VW to get over to uh, to get over to uh, the target view. And actually, in this case, I've missed the opportunity to do the burn because I've been talking too much. You can see that the I was supposed to do the burn two minutes ago. So what do we do in this case? We exit orbiter, we start over from the beginning. No, I'm kidding. What we do is we just need to go around one more time. That's a little unfortunate because our timing is so, our timing works out really well on this orbit. But just to show that uh, you don't have to time everything absolutely perfectly, we're just gonna go ahead and move the time forward rather than, rather than using the scenario editor to move time back. We're just gonna go forward one orbit. So let's go to the maneuver date ultra. Actually, let's go super and go all the way around one orbit. Now do an adjustment down to ultra. Now an adjustment down to hyper. And we need to kind of get everything set up again. Let's only take a second. And that's good enough. If we want, we can go here. And again, you know, off play distance is negative 52. That's a good number. Minimum altitude might be a little bit more than what I want. If I, if I care, I can come to the outward variable and see what happens if I take away some outward. Uh, actually, let me, let me reset the outward for now. And you can see everything's still fine. We probably don't need any outward in this flight. Anytime I cross the update, I'm going to do an update. 
and you can see how much things change because we've gone around we're saying this is going to be one orbit into the future and i'm just going to say that's okay again the minimum altitude you know 500 100 it's it's doesn't matter the off plane distance a little bit more important i would say as long as it's somewhere you know plus or minus 100 and then you're good to go and we're at 107 so i'm going to say that's fine so now we're going to press vw to come over to the view target and we're going to do the maneuver i'm going to point out something else about transx and about uh, really all mfds anytime you set a plan up this far in the future you're always going to want to do an update when you get closer to the time to do the maneuver right now we're saying that we're not going to do this maneuver for 5,000 seconds and i can pretty much guarantee you that in in the matter of that time this is going to have changed a lot so let me show you what i mean let's warp time forward until we're closer to the time to begin the burn we're going to bring that all the way down to 600 which is 10 minutes computer's uh lagging a little bit there so now we're 10 minutes away from the time to do the burn now watch what happens when i come back over to view maneuver and press update voila you can see we went from 500 kilometers to 3000 and our off plane distance really didn't change much so if we had just uh, done the burn without doing any kind of an update things would have been a lot farther off than we wanted them to be so here while we still have 10 minutes left to set this up we'll come back to view maneuver and we'll tinker with our variables a little bit in order to bring that minimum altitude back down so taking away prograde is not helping so let's add in prograde that's helping but it's also raising the off plane so let's uh let's bring the minimum minimum altitude down to 1000 as low as we can get it and that's actually as low as we can get it right there now we'll come over to the uh, date variable and we'll add or subtract date until our until everything looks better and that's the wrong way so let's go backwards and here again we're getting pretty close to what we want off plane distance is really good it's only negative 10 uh, minimum altitude we could probably do a little bit more correction on that with some prograde so let's go to the prograde variable and adding in a touch of prograde brings that down so let's go a couple touches out there that's good enough off plane distance let's see if we can do a little bit better on that because again uh, plus or minus 100 kilometers is, is pretty good this is acceptable but i would rather it be a little bit lower let's uh, touch the date backwards and there we are we're at 88 and it looks like if we touch it a couple more times we can get all the way down to zero but again it doesn't matter as long as it's plus or minus 100 kilometers now we'll press vw to get over to view target and we're going to uh, do what we did in the last video here we're going to uh, bring up that auto center feature which is a lovely feature that allows the uh vessel to orient itself where it needs to be but again as a as, a, as practice what you may want to do for your few for your first few times using transex is do it the old school way this is the way we had to do it for years and years and years for 10 years um, you want to or you want that x to be in the center and we know that for this maneuver it's going to be mostly prograde so the easiest thing to do first of all is just to go into the prograde position that'll get most of your orientation for you now we don't need to worry about orienting the x to the center yet because we're still 300 seconds out so let's get a bit, little bit closer but before we do that let's also take advantage of one of the other tools that we have at our disposal these days uh, burn time calculator and we, if we once we have our maneuver set up and we have a burn time calculator up we can press get and that will get the maneuver from transex and put it in the burn time calculator and you can see that it's going to do this burn in you know that amount of time and it's going to put in that amount of velocity and let's get ready to have the auto center feature on so let's uh go to the here but let's not turn it on yet let's wait till we're closer to the time to do the burn because if we turn it on now it's going to orient the vessel uh, pretty far off center and we just don't need to do that Hey, we're about let's say when we're 60 seconds out that's a good time to turn on auto center now you do have to have the newest version of burn time calculator in order to have that get button so make sure that you have that if you have one of the older versions of burn time calculator then you're not going to have that feature 
And don't worry about the fact that the X is sliding off to the side there a little bit. It'll correct itself. But you do want to give Auto Center, you know, 60 or 90 seconds to get oriented, especially if you if you're if you don't orient the vessel to begin with and you're completely sideways or backwards, then you might even want to give it 120 seconds to uh, get to give the vessel to get the vessel oriented. But uh, we are hands off at this point because we have burn time calculator set up to do the burn for us. So here in just 10 seconds, and we'll just warp time forward. There we go. And burning in. Now we're burning. And it looked like it burned a little bit later than the maneuver said, but um, that's one of the things I've noticed about the get feature is that the timing isn't completely perfect with Transex, and it also uses a slightly different amount of Delta V, but it's pretty close. It's close enough for our purposes. Uh, this burn will take a while, so rather than sit here and wait, we're just going to warp time forward at 10. And then once we get down close to the bottom of the burn, we'll come out of time warp. And we don't have to worry about killing the engines, fortunately, because burn time calculator is doing the burn for us. It'll shut off the engines on time. So when you get down to, say, 200 meters per second remaining, go back to real time and just let the burn uh, finish up. And it'll stop before the delta V here reaches zero because it always does. Now turn, turn auto center off. That's the first thing you always want to do. Don't ever forget to do that because it will screw you up big time if you leave auto center turned on. So turn auto center off, then press VW to get back over to maneuver. Turn maneuver mode off. Now bring up transex on the other side and finish up the burn, because remember we still had a few meters per second left. Finish up the burn using uh, linear translation, or you can even use a little bit of main engine. Just press control plus on the keyboard and just put in a few more meters per second until the minimum altitude is down to what you need it to be. And we're going to kill the main engines here. Yeah. Rotation, now with a little bit of translation, I'm just going to translate in a little bit farther because that's bringing the minimum altitude down and it's getting the off-plane distance closer to zero. And we'll go with that. So, um, you know, I think the off-plane distance might hold a little bit better. Actually, you can see it's slipping into the negative already. So you can see just, you know, how inaccurate this stuff can be. All right, let's kill rotation. And let's warp time forward and get out away from the Earth. We need to get out of the sphere of influence. Let's go to uh, no target here and change the projection to ship. Warp time forward at a thousand. Get out away from the Earth. And let's kill rotate here. Let's go to 10,000 and that'll get us out away from the Earth quite quickly. And once we get out to uh, zero point. 5.0 or 0 0.49 will be, this will turn red, indicating that we're in the weak SOI of Earth, which we now are. Now we can uh, do a, we can start thinking about doing a mid-course correction of some kind at this point. We could wait till we were within the moon's sphere of influence, but with Transex uh, being as inaccurate as it is, I think it tends to help to start doing your mid-course correction once you get out from Earth's uh, strong sphere of influence. Now, one thing you'll notice over here is that we've kind of lost some of our information. We had the off-plane distance to the base. It's gone. What happened to it? Well, when, when you go from one body to another, Transex, for whatever reason, it forgets the base that you had selected in Map MFD. Uh, that's just because we were, when we left the Earth's strong sphere of influence, it's like Transex does something internally and it resets something. No problem. All we need to do is bring back up Map MFD, and you'll notice that we have Brighton Beach selected as our target, but we need to reselect it as our target. Look over here, and when I press Enter here, I got Brighton Beach selected. When I press Enter, now we have our off-plane distance again. And you'll notice that it's gone all the way to negative 688, so we set it at close to zero while we were at Earth, and we had our minimum altitude set to whatever it was set at. And you can see that it's changed dramatically since then. So that's why 
it just doesn't do any good to sit there at earth and try to figure out okay i'm going to get my minimum altitude at exactly 20 kilometers because that's what i want to be when i get to the moon and i want my off plane distance to be exactly 0.00 it's a waste of time but once we're here once we're here at this point when we're you know out of the strong sphere of influence of the earth we're going to do a mid-course correction so let's bring up transects on this side and we're still viewing the encounter view on that side and we're going to turn maneuver mode on and we're going to uh we're going to do the same thing that we did at earth to set up the maneuver in the first place but this is just going to require a little bit of refinement we don't have to do big we don't have to do big changes here we don't need 3000 delta v or anything like that we just need a little bit of delta v to kind of nudge the vessel one way or the other to bring our minimum altitude back down to a low number and to get the off-plane distance set. So with maneuver mode on, we're just going to start uh, going through the variables, and there's really no good way, in my opinion, to know which variable to use. So we're just going to start with prograde. It's a bit of a guessing game. We're just going to see what prograde does, and we'll make a note of it. Then we're going to see what outward does, and we'll make a note of that, and then we're going to see what plane change does. So with prograde up, and probably super is good. You don't want to be on course at this point, but maybe maybe fine or super. And let's just add in some prograde and see what happens. And this isn't actually doing the burn, so we're not spending any fuel right now. We're just setting up the burn. So as I can see, I can see as I add in prograde, it's having the desired effect. It's bringing the minimum altitude down, and it's also bringing the off-plane distance down. Let's see what happens if I add in as much prograde as is necessary to get these numbers back where I want them. Okay, that would be pretty close to what I would want. Um, being that we're still this far away from the moon, these numbers are still going to change quite a bit. So, so this is a good starting point. So we're going to call that 28 meters per second. Let me actually just make a note of that real quick. So in order to fix our situation using prograde we would need about 28 meters per second but this may not be the best uh, the best solution so let's reset that back to zero and let's press VAR to go over to the outward variable and let's go to the uh, fine setting here and let's see what would happen to our very uh, our options here if we if we did uh, if we did some mid course correction using outward instead of prograde Let's start by adding in, and you can see that's making things worse. As I add in outward, the minimum altitude's going up, and the off-plane distance is going up, so that's clearly not what I want. So I can reset that to zero, or actually I can just do it faster by just going backwards like that. And at a fine setting, so how much outward would I need as compared to prograde in order to fix this situation? Let's find out. Okay, the best I'm getting here is about right here. I'm, and I'm only at 2,800. Uh, that didn't bring it down very much, and my off-plane distance is still pretty lousy. And that would cost me 45 meters per second, so almost almost twice as much as using, as using prograde. So clearly that's a bad idea. Let's reset it. And let's try plane change. Let's see what if we let's see if we can fix this purely with plane change. Let's go to the fine setting, and let's start by adding in plane change and just see what it does. Okay, that's bringing down the minimum altitude, but it's raising the off-plane distance. That might not be horrible. We'll see how it goes. Let's see uh, just how much it, it takes to bring the altitude down. Okay, so it takes us uh, 42 or so to bring the altitude down. And we're still not getting down to the lowest point, so that would be 38 meters per second. And clearly that's not a good idea either as compared to using just, as compared to using just prograde. But sometimes we run into a situation where using just one variable isn't the best solution. Sometimes using a combination, a combination of prograde and plane change at the same time can give us the a lower cost overall. Now we are at 30 minutes on this point of the video, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And when we come back, we'll, we'll figure out what we have to do here at this point in order to get the very best solution for this, for this mid-course correction. 
will will it be best to just use prograde by itself or will it be better to use a little bit of prograde a little bit of plane change and maybe even a little bit of outward if we combine those three variables together then instead of having a 28 meter per second cost we might be able to do this maneuver for only 14 meters per second i don't know we'll find out when we come back if you like this part of the video like it if you didn't like it don't like it subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed check out the uh, links in the description down below i have an faq that a lot of people never seem to notice so if you have questions be sure to refer to my faq please and i've got a facebook page that's uh no, I've only got about 150 followers there so far. I've got a, almost 1,000 on my YouTube channel. And on Facebook, I uh, it's a little more social, so I can communicate with you guys a little bit better. I can also post pictures, which I can't post on YouTube. I can post cool articles that I find online about this all this space-related content. So check out the Facebook page if you're interested in that. And if you don't use Facebook at all, I completely understand. That's fine, too. I will see you in the next part.